it was weird because when I talked to Allah about my problems and when I cried to him and I prayed to him, it's not like he took him away. But the complete opposite happened and it broke me. I was not expecting that. And people don't believe in God. How? Like, okay, God, you got this. You can handle it. Thank you. Welcome to and welcome back to my channel. My name is Bahja. If this is your first time seeing my face, hi and welcome to your first ever Girl Let's Talk. I love filming these videos for you guys and I love that you guys love them as well. It is a series here on this channel where we talk about all things self-improvement, mindset, confidence, self-love, literally anything that will allow us to learn and grow and become a better version of ourselves that way we can lead a meaningful fulfilling and purposeful life as you guys know in a lot of my videos almost all my videos i talk a lot about self-improvement and i talk about my experience of self-discovery and improvement and development and when i do that i can't help myself but talk about god and the role that he's played in my journey because he has literally been like the core center of my entire journey so everything that i've been able to do and achieve and become god has been the center of that every single time and i talk about it a lot on social media i talk about it a lot on like tiktok and stuff which if you guys don't follow me on tiktok you guys should if you guys don't follow me on instagram you guys should but i talk a lot about it and I was surprised to see how interested you guys were as well and you guys asked how can I build my relationship, how can I build my connection with God, what can I do to get closer to him. So today I'm going to be spilling all the tea and I'm going to be talking about that, just that and how you can also build a relationship with God and how you, because you guys, it is 2023, I think it's time for all of us to wake up, no matter whether you're Muslim or not, having something to believe in, having faith in something, having faith in a higher power, having faith, because we all know it's there, we all know it's there, we all know it exists, every single one of us knows that that force and that energy and what, like, we know that it's there, and I think it's time we all stop avoiding it, because not only does it make life make sense, but it gives you a, a sense of purpose and it's just like it's just like a light guiding you through like life and it's 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 chef's kiss. It's the best decision I have ever made in my life. So I'm so happy that you guys are also interested and I'm so excited for this video. You guys you guys know how I if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know I like wake up on a topic and I'm like I want to talk about this today and and I okay the angle literally just shifted because I had to fix something but as I was saying if you guys follow me on social media you know that like when I think of a topic and I say oh I'm gonna talk about this today I wake up early and I'm like and I literally become keyboard fingers I become a keyboard warrior and so I had all my ideas typed out or written out and you're not gonna want to skip any part of this video today you're not gonna want to go over anything because everything is just like perfectly aligned like you're gonna have to understand the first part to hear the second part and then the third part and the fourth part and then the fifth part you know what I mean so like don't skip any part of this video you're gonna want to stay you're gonna want to listen you're gonna want to hear you're gonna want to take notes maybe you're gonna want to reflect on it with a friend something but this video is so important and I feel like you can benefit so much from it and you can learn so much from it and it's literally life-changing I feel like everything that I try to share with you guys is life-changing this is life-changing so you're gonna want to pay attention you're gonna want to take notes okay so i'm gonna talk a little bit about my journey just a little bit so if you guys have been on this channel for a while you guys kind of heard it's in bits of my story i think i posted a video the first video that i ever posted was my journey to self-discovery and i talked a lot about it in that video but just a quick overview i was born and raised muslim when i was younger i had like this cute little innocent connection with god and relationship with him and as I grew older, as I went to high school, college, I just kind of drifted away a little bit. And it's crazy because also, by the way, I've gone to Islamic school from fourth to eighth grade. My parents put me in all types of programs, all types of stuff. So like they did the best that they could that I could be educated on Islam. And I've always been pretty well educated. Um, but 
I never felt connected to it. I never felt like I had a connection to it. And I honestly don't think I cared to. Um, I just kind of did my own thing. I was vibing and 2020 or 2019 rolled around and that's when you know we had COVID and everybody was quarantined and what that did was it forced me and I'm sure a lot of you guys to really deep things like to really sit with our thoughts there wasn't there wasn't as many distractions and like of course like when quarantine ro rolled around like we're just it was fun for a little bit but then after a while when school was online when I couldn't hang out with my friends when I couldn't distract myself through through like things that I was interested in because I used to be a fangirl gal okay I used to run like eight Instagram accounts three Twitter accounts a blog it's like those things always kept me busy like I was always busy hanging out with friends watching movies watching TV like there wasn't a second where I actually sat in silence with myself for like a really long time and I was just go 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 and yeah when COVID hit we just kind of it was really the first time that I actually sat with my thoughts and it was weird and uncomfortable and uncomfortable and it made me feel it was like ew why am I like sad like why ew <laughs> what are these feelings that I'm feeling this is <laughs> this is so gross all of a sudden I didn't have my friends around school was online I, I could have hung out with my family and stuff, but like all of a sudden I was thinking and I never thought like I never I mean obviously you're thinking all the time, but I never really paid attention to how I felt and how I was thinking and what was going through my mind and how I was I never felt feelings that I was feeling and I was like what is this what this is so uncomfortable and it made me so uncomfortable and I was afraid I was like no we're not we're not doing this again we're not sitting with our thoughts again this is never happening again like it's making me sad I don't want to be sad okay I didn't want to go back to that that place I don't want to go back there <laughs> I tried to take that feeling that I was feeling of being sad and hopeless and like feeling like I didn't really know anything or like where I was headed or who I was, I decided to distract myself with everything and anything that came my way. <laughs> I took that on. I said, okay, this is what we're going to be doing. So I try to find, I try to fill that, that, that void. I try to fill that void <laughs> with other people going out, doing, and not going out and partying. I, I wasn't that gal, okay? I wasn't that gal, just to clear things up. But <laughs> I would just like be out and I would hang out and catch a vibe. And I would try to avoid it as much as I could. And I did, and it worked for a while. Eventually, it just stopped working altogether. Things were started to aggravate me. The people that I was hanging out with started to irritate me. And it just started to feel really uncomfortable because I was like, I can't avoid that forever like it's something that i have to face when 2020 rolled around it was the first time that i was like okay i want to make a change for real and i started making vision boards and stuff that year i just like slowly like was trying to like better myself and and, and i started to like pray more and i would wake up really early to go to the gym and i made vlogs on tiktok so if you guys remember that was an era um but I would wake up and I would vlog my early mornings, but because I was up so early at like 4 a.m. in the morning, I would just pray to Hajjud, and I just I just did that. Um, I didn't know why I did it. I just I just prayed more, and you know what's crazy? The people that I hung around, like there was this girl that I used to hang around, and I used to be like, cause we would hang out all day, like all day, and I would be like, like can we like pray? Like I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna be late. I have to go home so I can pray. And she would be like, God will understand. And that never sat right with me. I felt disgusted and uncomfortable. But I just started to take things slow. Like literally, I I still, you know, was vibing the way I was vibing. I still wasn't like a hijabi. I still didn't really like I just I just started to pray to Hajjud, right? And I started to pray more consistently, just like the five uh fourth prayers. And once that happened, I I felt really low in that point in my life like I, I felt really 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 low and at that time my parents weren't here and it was just this whole thing they were on vacation I said that like they abandoned me <laughs> but it was just a really low point in my life and it just felt heavy like I felt heavy I didn't know what to do and so like I was just praying and stuff and just taking it slow day by day right um still trying to find that 
peace and that contentment in other things and other people and then rolled around this trip that I took to New York City and that trip just made me realize who am I and who have I met like it, it, it gave me perspective I was like there's so much potential I have so much potential there's so much that I can be there's so much that I can do and that change of environment really helped me realize that and I was like what have I been like who have I been I'm I don't want to continue being the person that I've been because it's not taking me to a great place like I'm not feeling good I don't really have much going on for myself and I feel like crap because I'm not doing anything with my life and so um by the way at the time I was in school I just I just thought like there's so much that I can do there's so much potential that I have that's in me and I can't just keep sleeping on myself and so when I came back it was perfect because the day that literally the day that I hopped on the flight was the first day of Ramadan so I was like this Ramadan I'm gonna take it serious right I was like I'm gonna take it seriously I'm gonna do all the right things I'm gonna pray obviously fast I'm gonna read Quran I'm gonna Go to the masjid we went to the masjid every single night like it was it was beautiful and it was the best experience of my life it was probably the best ramadan that i've ever had yet i can't lie but it just made me feel so different i felt lighter i felt like that heavy weight of just like negativity and like just being lost and hopeless and all that I just went away like I felt lighter I, I don't know how to explain it but I felt lighter and it made me feel really happy and I was like you know what this isn't gonna be just a one month thing this isn't just gonna end it all on I want this all year round and I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna make it happen because feeling like crap and feeling that feeling of heaviness just wasn't it I wasn't rocking with it y'all I was not vibing with it it made me feel so sick and so I was like this is not going to be just a Ramadan thing. I'm going to make this every day. I'm going to make, I'm going to keep this feeling. I will do anything and everything to keep this feeling. And that's when I decided I was going to start wearing the hijab. And I haven't taken it off since. So we're going strong. Inshallah, we continue to go strong. But um, yeah, I was like, this is not how I want to feel. I don't want to feel that way ever again in my life. Keep that away from me. <laughs> that is not who I am and that is not who I want to be and so I started to learn more about Allah and in the craziest way possible okay let me tell you guys TikTok yeah TikTok okay when I was at this like lower place TikTok TikTok I would come across these TikToks of like ayah translations and I memorized Quran but I never well memorized the Quran I'll say um I don't think I remember half majority of it but um I memorized it when I was a kid memorized I never understood the translation and I never really learned it but when I was a kid it just didn't didn't make sense like anytime someone tried to tell me the translation I was just like it's not working it's I'm not comprehending I started coming across these TikToks and it brought me so much peace you guys have no idea it was like this like this like like my heart felt different my heart my heart like my physical heart in my chest felt different it was like this like wave of peace like when i when i read those those ayahs and i'm like this is who god is whole time i don't even know who he is this is who god is and i never i never knew who god was like i don't think i even like had an idea i mean obviously like it's like oh allah is the most merciful allah is you know the almighty allah is the creator of everything but that was it <laughs> that was it and so these when i was reading these i was like this is who's always present this is who i'm supposed to turn to this is who can help me through my problems this is who promises me that i'm able to overcome my challenges that he's brought to me you know what i mean it's just weird it was like i felt peace like my heart felt different then i had hope I had hope. I had hope that there was God that I can turn to with my problems because I felt weird putting my problems on other people and I never even understood my own feelings and it was weird for me to acknowledge my feelings. So taking that and, and talking about it to other or talking about it with other people just didn't sit right with me. I couldn't get myself to do it. It was really uncomfortable. It was weird and I just didn't want to put my problems on anyone else. And I don't think I had anyone that I can, I mean, my family would definitely show up for me and show me love and, you know, but I was just like, I don't want to put that problem on anyone else. Someone who would listen, someone who would understand, someone who would bring me ease, someone who would bring me contentment, someone who would bring me all that I was looking for. 
I was like, there is hope and I'm not gonna knock it till I try it. I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna learn who God is. So I decided I was gonna learn a little bit about him. And that is when I picked up, look how beat up the book is. <laughs> That is when I picked up this book, Secrets of Divine Love. Now I know there's a little bit of controversy around it on TikTok, but from what I know um, and what I've learned and as someone who's read this book multiple times, I feel like the points that those people were making and I'm not gonna shit on them, but the points that those people were making is they just simply don't understand literature and I love literature and I love words and I love writing and I love all that. And I think this book is just so beautifully written both both from a literature standpoint and just like an Islamic standpoint. I think it does like a really, really good job at explaining who Allah is in a simple way that you can understand and a way that builds a feeling and connection within yourself. Like you're able to relate with it and then it does a great job at teaching you who you are as a spiritual being because i feel like for the longest time i've been disconnected from that part of me and i've just been living in the physical world to reacting to the physical world and i never really like was like ever thinking about that spiritual side of me that that part of me that i can't see but i know is there and so i think it does a really 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 beautiful job at that and this book has changed my life and it's changed the way the understanding that i had of allah and just like understanding who i am as a spiritual being because it's so easy to become disconnected from that part and just be living in the physical world of what you can see and touch to believe in just like this physical world that we're living in is just not belief at all like i don't know and i just felt disconnected from that from a really really for a really really long time and this book has been has allowed me to like reconnect with that part of myself and it just made me see the world so much more different i i recommend this book for everyone and i bought it for so many people and i love that it also has the 99 names of allah at the back of the book and that's how I learned them all. That's really when I started to, to seek knowledge. Like I was hungry for knowledge. I was like, why why is this making me feel this way? Why do I feel this way? Why is it that when I'm when I'm disconnected from Allah and I'm disconnected from the real reality, which is not the physical world, why is it that I feel so heavy and down so i started to seek knowledge i started to learn about him but i also started to talk to him you guys can call me crazy but you guys need to start doing this you guys need to start just having conversations with allah straight up like it doesn't have to be in a specific place it doesn't have to be in the masjid it doesn't have to be on a prayer mat i would take get in my car summertime okay it was warm outside i would get in my car drive to a parking lot conversation just straight giving him everything my problems what i hope to be what i hope to have who i want to be who i don't want to be the people who did me dirty everything i'm talking about everything <laughs> or i would go for a night drive and just like look at the stars like i would go in a parking space open my sunroof look at the stars and just like talk and just like think it was the first time that i actually thought and i sat with my ideas and my 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 mind like it was the first time i actually sat with myself and thought and like paid attention to the way that I was thinking and my thinking patterns and the way that I felt. And it was weird, uncomfortable for sure. I started to pray more and become more present in my prayer. And the weirdest thing happened, the more that I got to know him, the more I got to know myself. But the more that I started to see all my uglies and I feel like it was weird because when I talked to Allah about my problems and when I cried to him and I prayed to him, it's not like he took him away. That did not happen. The complete opposite happened. What he did was he, he showed me all of my uglies, all of the things that were keeping me from living my best life, from being the best person that I can be, all of it. And it was so uncomfortable and it broke me. Now I know that those things, it was like a new problem was coming up every day, but it's like those things were coming up because Allah was showing me that I need to heal these if I want to move on. I need to remove certain things and certain people and certain beliefs and ideas so that way I can grow into the person who I am today or grow into being better. And that was awful. It Like I, I went into prayer and I went to God like, god please help me and he did and he did but i was not expecting that i was not expecting that it was so lonely it was so weird and uncomfortable and just like scary but 
it's weird because you, you feel that way but then it's like you also know that Allah is there with you and that he's guiding you and that he's helping you and when I tell you guys Allah showed up in my life in the most beautiful ways like those times where I was feeling lonely you guys you guys it's so weird like I don't talk about it a lot and I don't bring it up because those are just, those moments were so like personal to me but when you're in those moments of like feeling really lonely and feeling really down and sad because all of a sudden you have you see all of your uglies and you acknowledge all of your uglies and it's not the best feeling in the world. Allah shows up in your life in so many ways. And so as long as you pay attention and it wasn't great, but I've learned a lot and I learned a lot about myself. I got to see my anger, my bitterness, my self-doubt, my self-pity. I got to see my insecurities. I got to see all of my uglies. I'm telling you, like you'll get to see all of your uglies and it's not nice to see that because when it's like oh this is who i've been and it's been so ugly it, it breaks you because it's like who am i i was i was i was in this i was in this place of who am i like what is happening and i was like how did i get here who have i been and in those moments i became the observer of my own self and that's that's like the first step into changing that's the first step into becoming better into becoming who you want to be is becoming the observer of your life it's like i was looking at myself and i was looking at all of my uglies and i was like this is this is wild we need to do something and it was it was beautiful because i was able to see my uglies acknowledge them point out what just didn't serve me anymore and i was able to surrender and stop wanting to control everything so bad because that control is what made me bitter and angry and mad and stressed and and I was able to place all my worries and all my problems in the hands of Allah that way I can focus on growing and becoming better and building my inner environment to being filled with peace and contentment and love and goodness um, and like rewriting my story that way I can grow into the, the, the person that I am and the person that I'm continuing to grow into. God has really been the center of my entire journey and without him, I would have never been able to be the person that I am today and if I wasn't able to connect with him, then I wouldn't be able to become greater than my problems and I would drown in them. I wouldn't have the support that I needed in order to overcome my circumstances. With the help of Allah, not only have I been able to set myself up for a successful and abundant life Life, but I've also been working on and working towards having a successful hereafter which is the most important part so many of you guys who are watching this channel you guys want to grow you guys want to better yourselves you guys want something better for yourself you want to build a life that is is better than your current circumstances you have goals you have ambitions you have dreams if you want to make that happen which you 100% can you have to become greater than your circumstances the process itself is simple but it breaks you literally it breaks you because you have to literally deteriorate the person that you've been and start from scratch and build yourself up and if you believe in god which alhamdulillah say alhamdulillah if you do you literally have the creator of this world the creator of your problems on your side rooting you on guiding you loving you supporting you um providing for you comforting you evolving you and you just have to get to know him and you have to you have to have to have to make him the center of your entire world and so let me stop rambling and let me teach you how you can do that also, if you guys don't know, I am working on a six-week program, inshallah, a six-week program for you guys. It's for the girls, so if the guys who are watching this, I'm sorry, but um, it's for the girls, and it is a program that teaches you to rewrite your story. I will give you guys a lot more details soon about the program. But there's a link in the description where you guys can join the waitlist. And inshallah, I'll make like a video about it sometime so that you guys can get a better understanding of what rewriting your story means and what it is. But yeah, for now, join in the link in the description. Okay, so first things first is learning who God is, learning who you are, and seeking knowledge. So I talked a little bit about it earlier where 
when I got to know God, I got to know myself. And when you when you get to know yourself, you also get to know God. I'm going to show you guys this book again. I highly recommend it. It's on Amazon. I'm going to put the link in the description. But this book really helped me get an idea of who I was as a spiritual being. It does such an incredible job on explaining who God is, who God is for you and can be for you and who you are. And it talks about prayer and it talks about Ramadan. And it, talks, it really talks about a lot of things and it gives you a different perspective on Islam which is what I needed I had to relearn Islam again for myself and it's kind of when I when I say like you don't learn Islam it's like an experience it's literally an experience not only do you grow as a person your life completely changes and it's just it's just beautiful and it's literally it says a spiritual journey into the heart of Islam literally it's beautiful and it literally makes me tear up and if you can't tell from the book this book has been rained on um, it's been cried on it's been through a lot clearly what this book does is it, it really reminds you that you have a purpose and what that purpose is and that you weren't put on here for no reason which literally none of us were like it's dumb to think that God just put us here for no reason and so it does a really good job at that and it and it like the way it's written is just like it touches your heart <laughs> it teaches you god's attributes and how you're supposed to be a reflection of his attributes so you're supposed to reflect that and that is literally the teachings of islam it teaches us how to reflect those things by being forgiving by showing people mercy by being kind and being generous and it's just it just gives you a different view on islam there's a quote from the book that says Islam is the path of showing you how to become who you really who you already are and I think that's literally what it does is it shows you and it reminds you of your truest self which isn't that physical body which isn't our brains and it isn't it's a lot more than that and so it really just it's a good reminder and it, it teaches you a lot so 10 out of 10 highly recommend reading this book and another way that you can learn who Allah is is through his 99 names which is good to memorize I think I think it's like you were supposed to memorize it but when you look at it it's like this is who God is this is literally God saying you this is who I am here are my attributes and it's just beautiful when you read it like it's it's like this is who Allah is and there's this hadith um, that goes Allah says he is for his servant what his servant thinks of him to be and he can do what he thinks that we can or he thinks or he I'm gonna put it on the screen he I don't know why I'm messing it up he can do for us what we think he can or what we believe he can and it all comes down to who you think Allah is and Allah will show up in your life as those things I promise you another way this this like was like this is like mind-blowing for me look at the way that learn a little bit of science I don't know take like like look at look at a YouTube video of how your body functions just like like actually of how your body functions it's mind-blowing like I literally sit there and I'm like and people don't believe in God how and when God said he showed us the signs he was not lying look at take a look at the earth take a look at how everything just functions in union how everything needs everything in order for the universe to function correctly it's insane it's mind-blowing and when I take a look at nature or like go on a walk or I travel and I see these beautiful beautiful places and the mountains are huge and it's just like wow I'm like this tiny in this like huge world it's so crazy to comprehend and when you just sit on that and you think about that and that's why it's good for us to go out in nature it's good for us to travel it's a good reminder of Allah like a really good reminder you get to see who Allah is just look at how the animals like move like it's so crazy it's like people don't believe in Allah how and like the sunsets like those things are just like beautiful to me and anytime I look at it it, it reminds me of Allah and I'm like wow He's incredible. This is wild. <laughs> and it's so crazy because we can't even comprehend half of these things a lot of the time. And that's why I became so obsessed with science. It's like, this is why these things are this way. This is so cool. It's just cool learning about the way that you function. That is a hadith from Rasulullah and it goes, whoever knows himself knows his Lord. So deeply getting to know yourself. That means sitting with those thoughts. It's uncomfortable. It's gross. If you've never been one to like be like touchy-feely 
oh i was never that gal it is crazy because now i'm like on social media being so vulnerable with you guys and so open but it was weird and uncomfortable and scary and it was upsetting but you have to get to know yourself you have to deep everything just sit alone with your thoughts i think it's bob proctor said that um problem with m the problem with men is that they don't think i think it was bob proctor it could be from a book i don't really know but we don't think and i'm not going to blame people that we don't because the way that the world is set up we're constantly distracted you're at school you're at work you're on tiktok all day you're watching a movie you're laughing with your friends you're with your family you're taking care of your baby like you never actually think we're, the world is moving so fast. It's constantly go, 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 go. We're hustling all the time. Stop and think. Deep things. Understand yourself. Try to figure it out. Journal. Whatever it is you have to do. When you know who you are at your deepest core, at the deepest level, let me get a little spoiler. The only thing you'll learn really is how weak you are without the help of God is how incapable you actually are as a human being, but also how powerful, I don't wanna say powerful and use the wrong term, but how strong you are with God. Like you're so weak on your own, but you're so strong with God. So that's something that you'll learn, spoiler. Just learn yourself to your deepest core and just watch, you will learn who God is. Another way is girl, educate yourself. Educate yourself, you're doing a great job at it right now, but there's so much content, free content, free content, guys. Instead of Kiki King on TikTok, which I love to do too, um, follow a bunch of people. There's Mufti Mink, there's Umar Suleiman, there's this guy on Instagram, his name is like Ali something, I'll put it on the screen, but they're so relatable, they're funny, and then they remind you of Allah, they're like educating you, you learn so much. I love listening to the podcast. Um, what is that one? Yes, Muslim Central. Um, I listen to Nurman Ali Khan. Like, there's so many people who are relatable, and especially Mufti Mink. Like, I love Mufti Mink. May Allah bless him for all that he does. Just learn, and you will fall in love not only with Islam, not only with the Prophet وسلم, not only with our our practices, but you're gonna fall in love with Allah, and you're gonna fall in love with yourself. And when you understand who Allah is, and you understand who you are, you will fall in love with yourself. You will have more compassion for yourself. You'll have more compassion for other people, and you will grow. You will shine like the nur on your face is gonna be you're gonna figure out what your passions are you're gonna figure out what path you need to take you guys life literally changes okay if you want to make a change in your life start here start here every time okay. so next thing is to actually build a relationship with Allah like actually connect with him and if you want to build a relationship you want to make conversation you want to show up you want to remember that person you want to um reach out to that person and i don't think i ever did that <laughs> i can't even lie like even like through my salat like i was never really present um missed one here and there you know what i mean in the quran allah says allah chooses for himself whom he wills and guides to himself whoever turns back to him so basically allah guides to himself whoever turns to him so what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to turn to allah conversation girl if you don't want to start waking up first of all for prayers let's start there if you're not already praying your five daily prayers make it a habit start praying and even if you don't understand it and you don't feel the beauty of the prayer just start praying make it a habit and make sure you show up every single time and then practice being more present and more present and more present and ask him for stuff you guys know what's crazy i never used to make that <laughs> Can we just talk about that? It's so weird because du'a has become a part of my daily, daily, daily practice. But who else am I supposed to go for? And that's what I mean by surrendering that control. When I wanted to have control over everything, when things didn't go my way, which they always will. They might not always go your way. And when things didn't go my way, I would be so angry and bitter. And that's where that bitterness and that heavy energy came from, was me trying to be in control. And so when you make du'a, you're not you're surrendering to Allah and you're asking him and you're saying the, the creator of you is the universe apparently I didn't know who to go to but I didn't go to the creator of the universe um, the person who gives you everything and takes things away I didn't go to that person I just decided oh I don't know I'm, I'm pissed off because I didn't study hard enough I'm pissed off because I didn't work hard enough I'm pissed off because maybe I'm just not good enough you know what I mean and that, that's where the, all that negativity came from 
And so go to him, ask him for stuff, pray, tell him your problems, give him the tea, like whatever it is. Like, that's what I mean. I went out into parking lots. I just like, you know, I'm just going through my day and I'm like, oh, Lord. Like, you know, it's like that innocent, like childlike connection, that relationship. When I was, when I was younger, I would literally just be like, oh, Allah. Um, I'm in trouble. Please help me get out of trouble. Or Ola, I um I just did something bad. I broke something. Please, please don't ha like make my mom mad. You know that innocent like childlike connection with Allah. Go back to that. Just talk to him. Um, have conversation with him. Tell him about your day. Say thank you for all that you've given me today. Thank you for this new experience today. Thank you for this new friend. Thank you for this. Just talk to him and see what happens. I'm not gonna spoil anything for you. <laughs> okay. Allah says, O oh my serpents, I have forbidden oppression for myself and I have made it forbidden amongst you, so do not oppress one another. O oh my servants, all of you are astray except those whom I have guided, so seek guidance from me and I shall guide you. O oh my servants, all of you are hungry except those whom I have fed, so seek food from me and I shall feed you. O oh my servants, all of you are naked except those whom I have clothed, so seek clothing from me and I shall clothe you. O oh my servants, you commit sins by day and by night and I forgive all sins. So seek for me and I shall forgive you. That is who we're talking about right now. Be for real. That's what I mean by educate yourself. I didn't know of these ayats. I didn't know of these hadiths. I didn't know who Allah was. Educate yourself on who he is. Read these ayats. Go on Pinterest and type in Islamic quotes. <laughs> like for real it just brings so much peace to your heart it's like this is who allah is why am i afraid to go to him and ask him for must for stuff why am i afraid to go to him and ask him for forgiveness one thing i'm always do is repent you guys <laughs> one thing i'm always do is repent when you are praying like prayer is literally a conversation with god you are having a conversation with god also tips on prayer okay you guys should understand what you're saying. So like look at the translation of Fatiha and the translation of everything we say in Salad, okay, in prayer. Also, just start praying your five prayers. Make it a habit. If you can wake up for Tahajjud, there's nothing in this world that I recommend more than waking up for Tahajjud. Do it. If you can't, do it. If you can't, figure out a way to be able to do it, okay? When I tell you guys, when you make it a habit, you'll feel different when you don't pray my nose is like so congested right now so i sound like a squeaky bird when you start to pray consistently when you don't pray when you miss a prayer when you delay a prayer your entire mood in that moment changes i promise you like you'll feel when you're like wait am i missing a salad right now wait is a salad like am i delaying a salad right now you will feel it your energy is just gonna go down because when you're praying you're on a higher frequency now you have more energy you feel better and so when you're missing your salad it's like hello what are you doing and like when you're in salad the way that I like to think about it is when I'm in salad the weight of the world is just not on my shoulders anymore and I leave my problems my worries on the prayer mat you guys it does not get off that prayer mat with me I just leave everything there and I can feel all of that, all of the worry, all of the stress, just the weight of the world just getting off of my shoulders. Like I feel it shedding off of me and I feel so much lighter, so much more happy, so much more energized after I've prayed a lot. And that is how you will feel when you stay consistent in your prayer. And when you really think about the times that the prayers come at, it's just it just comes at a perfect time because it's like a break from the world like it's like a break like i'm catching a break from the world i don't have to be present in this physical real world that we all seem to be so trapped in half of the time salah takes us out of that and puts us into the reality of the truth and like what life is really about and like our truest form and we could we get to like connect with allah it just brings us back to that divinely energy i don't know how to explain it i'm probably butchering this right now but if you get it you get it okay and i want you guys to get it so i want you guys to make prayer priority i want you to instead of you know saying oh today i'm gonna do this 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 that say today i'm gonna do this and after duhur i'm gonna do this and then after asr i'm gonna do this and then after asr after maghrib i'm gonna do this like your entire day should be revolved around those five prayers okay and six if you get up for tahajjud which all of you guys should i want you to, i want to read this page from 
the secrets of divinely divine love to you guys and it's about prayer i'm just gonna read the parts that i have highlighted so it might not be like full sentences all the distractions we experience during prayer are places in our life where god is calling us to surrender to him those are those worries those are those stresses those are those things that you have and you want to hold control over and it's putting you into that stress state and taking you out of that creative state leave it to god surrender to god that's why i say when i tell you guys i leave my worries on my prayer mat i'm like okay god you got this you can handle it thank you like be for real we have that we're able to do that god literally says come to me with your worries let me take care of it relax chill take a chill pill <laughs> okay it is only when we bring our awareness to what keeps us from being present with God and slowly returning to our consciousness to Him that we begin to feel contentment. The worldly life, I'm telling you guys, all of these physical, the physical world, the physical world isn't reality. So you guys need to bring your awareness back to that actual being, that spiritual being that you are, to God and connecting with Him. And I'm gonna get into the science of that in a bit. You guys think that there's no, there's not scientific proof? I'm gonna come, I'm gonna get to the science part towards the end of this video when I talk about surrendering just in general. We are, listen, listen to this part. We are called to be consistent in prayer, even on the days when we feel disconnected from God because he is not disconnected from us. God is always with us. Can we just, just think about that for a second? Allah is always with you. He's not disconnected with you, from you. And those barriers that you, when you feel disconnected from Allah, it's not, it's not from Allah's side. Those are barriers that you've built. You're distancing yourself from Allah, but Allah never distances himself from us. And so that prayer that we're told you should do this, that's not punishment. That's not like, oh, get up and pray. It's something that benefits us. It's something that makes us feel better. It's something that brings us contentment and peace. It's not like just do this but it's for us it's not like Allah saying oh do this for him Allah doesn't need us to pray it's for our own sake it's for us it makes us you know what I mean so stop sleeping on prayer guys as the Prophet famously asked his companions tell me if one of you had a river at your door and you washed five times a day would your filth remain question mark his companion said that no filth would remain the Prophet then said that is the likeliness of prayer. Five times a day, God obliterates wrongs with it. You guys know when you're in um, when you're in prayer, your sins are literally falling off of you. Like just deep that for a second. Your sins fall off of you. You're a lot lighter because you're filled with more love and positive energy and it's crazy when you actually think about it. Like it is important to understand that just as when we get closer to a light source, our shadows become greater. See, this is why I love the way that this book is written. As we approach the light of God, the devil and the voices of darkness can grow, working harder to pull us away from the divine. Literally. You guys need to get up and pray. I'm telling you right now. You guys, stop right now. Stop feeling guilty and like, oh, like, what if? Because that, that what if, like, I don't be forgiven. I'm not forgiven for whatever you did. Whatever you did, okay? I don't care what you did. That is like the one thing that's like, it doesn't matter how bad whatever it is that you did was you need to turn back to Allah and repent that's why you never gonna you're never gonna catch me not repenting even if I cussed I'm gonna go and repent <laughs> I'm telling y'all I love this book so I just wanted to read that little portion to you guys and so yeah when I went to pray to Hajjud every morning when I was at my lowest point I wanted to so badly change I wanted to so badly have a different have different results that I went and prayed but Allah didn't show me, Allah didn't take away my problems. I thought he was gonna take away he didn't take away my problems. I mean he did eventually, alhamdulillah, but in a, such a weird and unexpected way. And that's when he showed me all my uglies. That's when he exposed to me all the things that were keeping me from being the person that I could be, being a better person, and just overall connecting with him the way that I, I do and I hope to continue doing. Allah says in Surah Al-Ra'd, indeed Allah will not change the conditions of a people until they change what is within themselves. I'm telling you guys, my conditions, my circumstances wasn't changed until those uglies were presented to me, until those, my iPad just died, but until those uglies were presented to me, I wasn't able to change myself, what was within me, and then because of that, 
my circumstances ended up changing because I took responsibility and I said hey here are all my uglies which alhamdulillah all that came from Allah even the, the awareness of my uglies but being able to be aware of my uglies just allowed for my circumstances to change like everything in my life my out, outer world changed after I changed my inner world okay I had to get my laptop because my iPad failed me okay so next is dua y'all don't sleep on the power of dua dua is like the most powerful thing ever like it is like a tool that Allah has given us dua can change your destiny dua can change your like it's crazy the way that dua works and the power of it and the f to think that i never used to make dua what was i what who who was i waiting for things to come to me from like who i showed up consistently and i still do i am so consistent with my dua i always trust and believe that allah will give it to me and the only thing between me and that thing that i'm making dua for is time you have to overcome time as well you guys you have to be greater than time and you do that by putting that trust in Allah. I have a list on my phone, which if you guys don't, you guys should do this also. Um, make a list on your phone, your notes, called Dua and Affirmations. And be consistent with it every single day. I just wanna read to you guys, um, I'll talk about affirmations later, but I have all my du'as in here. All the things that I want to ask Allah for, they are in here. And I'm consistent with it. Every prayer, every single prayer, which is five times a day, and then tahajjud. Every morning, every evening, I make sure that those du'as are said. I make sure that those du'as are made. And I've seen the power of du'a. You'll never know until you know. So don't knock until you try it, okay? Start making du'a for whatever it is that you want. As crazy it is, as it is, make du'a for it. And it wasn't even just like the worldly things. Like I made du'a for Allah to help me overcome my problems. I always made du'a and I was consistent in my du'a. And there was a time where I was struggling with something so deeply. And every single day, I made du'a that Allah helped me. Allah gave me the strength to overcome it. I don't have to say that du'a anymore because I overcame it. But it's it's crazy like the power of dua is so insane and y'all be sleeping on it i know i was so <laughs> stop sleeping on dua and start making dua also in order for a dua to be accepted let's talk about it in order for a dua to be accepted you have to believe that it's already been accepted think about it and i'll get into the science later i i, I just want to like i just want you guys to understand why these things are the way that they are and what happened but you have to believe that allah is capable of giving you that thing if you don't you're back in that heavy negative energy of doubt, doubting who Allah is, doubting Allah's ability. Never, ever, ever make a dua for something and think even for a second because that thought will spoil it. Allah will accept this dua, period. And what helps me so much is when I make dua for something, I already think of it to be true in my future. It'll come one day. Whenever that day is, it'll come. It exists in my future. It exists in my reality. Right? And so instead of stressing over it and going back into that negative, heavy energy of stress, self doubt, self pity, I've put it in the hands of Allah. I've asked for it. I believe that it's going to happen and I know that it's a part of my future. And if not, something better will be. And I just keep it pushing. I put that energy and that focus. You can't put your focus in both the negatives and the positives, you guys. You guys, that's not how that's not how we're built. That's not how we function. So when Allah is telling us, come to me with your problems, come to me with your doubts, come to me with all of your negative energy and let me take care of it. That is taking us out of that 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 because we can't think both at the same we can't be on we can't focus on both at the same time. So that takes that focus of negativity places it somewhere and now you're free to be in that positive energy and being in that state of creation because when you're in that state of stress and negativity and that heaviness you can't create something better for yourself put that now i'm able to put that focus towards myself put that focus towards taking the steps that i need to actually get there so you have to fully and wholeheartedly believe that that dua has been accepted and to do that, it takes knowledge of knowing who Allah is. That's what I'm saying. Don't skip this video because we're going step in by step. When you understand who Allah is and you practice affirmations that will help you believe that he is those things and you practice reading his 99 names and you repeat and you repeat and you repeat and you remember Allah and you say, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar, that will help you get to know Allah. 
And when you know who Allah is, it's easier to say, yo, I've made dua for this and I'm not going to stress about it not coming true. That ounce of doubt isn't going to come anywhere near you and spoil that dua for you. So you have to know who he is. And when you make dua, you have to wholeheartedly believe one ounce will spoil it of doubt. So you have to fully wholeheartedly believe. Whenever I make dua, I act like that dua has already been accepted by not stressing about it. Like let's say you want something so bad and you get that something and you have that something now. It's sitting in your room or it's, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a test that you really, really wanted to pass. You pass that test, you're no longer worried about it. There's like, it happened, you have it, you're no longer worried about it. And that's what it is when you make dua for something and you let it go because you know that it's already yours. That worry, that stress, that negative energy disappears. It doesn't exist. And so that's just the beauty about the dua and the rules of dua and what it takes to actually have a dua come true. Allah doesn't want you to worry. It makes me so emotional. Allah doesn't want you to worry. He doesn't want you to be in that negative energy. That's why he says for a dua to be accepted, you have to wholeheartedly believe. And it just, it just frees you. It frees you from worry. It frees you from the what ifs and the when will this happen. And it just frees you of a, re a unwanted reality. Nobody wants to have a reality where they're constantly in fear and they're afraid of the future and they're afraid of the like what could happen. That takes you out of that. That removes you from that fear. That removes that fear. And it's just such a beautiful concept if you actually think about it. This, this did it for me. The Prophet wasallam said, Verily your Lord is generous and shy. If a servant raises his hands to him, he will become shy to return them empty. Anytime you raise your hands and make dua for something, your hands don't come back down empty. Be for real. Allah is shy and generous. Like that just, it melts my heart. It melts my heart. Wow. Bro, God is beautiful. Islam is beautiful. Life, like Islam, just learning this stuff, learning Islam, experiencing what I've experienced just makes me understand life. And I feel bad for whoever doesn't. Like, I'm like, how can you not be in this state of being? Next is bettering yourself through the teachings of Islam. Any self-help book I've read, any book that I've read about how to become better, how to become a better version of yourself, I read it and I'm like, this is just Islam. These are the teachings of Islam and the teachings of Islam are so beautiful. It allows you to live a better life. It allows you to live a meaningful life, a purposeful life. It makes you a better person. You have to be different. You have to do better. You have to become better. Remember how I told you guys, Allah showed me my uglies, the envy, the jealousy, the being a mean person. I used to be mean and that shocks people now. <laughs> I was mean, but that didn't come from a pl that was that's not who I was. You know what I mean? And I don't think anyone is bad to the core. People do bad things, but I genuinely do not believe people are bad. They're just so disconnected from who they really are. And Islam brings you back to that. It's crazy. <laughs> you want to reflect Allah's attribute. Allah is the greatest, right? Allah is the best. Allah is the most merciful, the most kind, the most generous. Like, Allah is shy, Allah is beautiful, Allah loves beauty. Become those things. Literally become those things, reflect those things. Because those attributes are within you. They are your core. They are your, your, your core. They're that part of you that is the truest and the closest to Allah. Those attributes sit within us and we really just have to become it and let it consume us and let it take over us. You have to become kinder. Okay, it's funny because, let me show you guys. When I first started doing this, I wrote down, literally look, daily affirmations plus dua. Make it your mission to do a, one small good deed today for the sake of Allah and don't doubt the power of that deed. And so I would do, I would just like start showing up different. I'm like, I'm not that ugly person that I've been. And if I want to change and I want to be better, I can't continue being that person. And so I would just start acting different. Like I would just start being better to people. And it took learning who we're supposed to be in Islam. And it took, it's easier to show up as a kinder person when you understand what that kindness does, not only to you and for you, but to the other person and for the other person. And so you guys, it's funny, you guys are gonna laugh at me, but I would literally, <laughs> I would literally make my sister's bed for her. 
<laughs> and that was my one good deed. I would make my sister's bed for her. I would smile more at people outside, like, and hold the door for people. I just started to do little things. Like, it's not like I want you to put on this big fake smile and go out and just be a whole different person and just start being kinder to people. But take it step by step. And the more you become close to Allah and the more you learn about Islam, the more you do these things and you get closer and closer closer to that pure to the purest form of you the more you start to do these things naturally and it's not like you're becoming a whole nother person you're simply just tapping into that person that you've always been and let me tell you guys something i focus so hard on cleaning my heart cleansing my heart I w there's this dua that i always used to that i always 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 make till this day and i just made it up i don't know if it's like a little dua also the beautiful thing about dua is you can make it in any language you can you know just it's just you just you just want to call out to Allah and connect with Allah but I, I make this dua and I'm like oh Allah please remove any evil and any envy and jealousy from my heart like I always focus on my heart and I and I like it's like I'm cleansing my heart and I'm removing all those uglies and that dirtiness through all these practices through prayer through dua through affirmation through being kind through learning I'm cleaning my heart and so focus on the cleansing of the heart and, and other things that I would do to cleanse my heart is not listen to so much music I started to listen to a lot more Quran like to the point where I would have you know how like you'll have like songs stuck in the back of your head I would have like eyes stuck in the back of my head and then like I'll be like cleaning the kitchen or eating or cooking or doing something and I'm like re reciting an ayah like I, I just started to do that and I felt so much lighter. You want to show you want to show kindness and mercy because that is who Allah is. You want to be you want to help those in need because that is who Allah is. You need to stop gossiping and revealing the secrets of other people and the the mistakes that other people have made and blasting it on social media and posting it everywhere because that is not what Allah does. Allah conceals your ab and your your the things that you do for you three times. But <laughs> my mom used to tell me three times and then it's over. She would be like, you lying? Three times Allah will cover for you and then it'll be exposed. But if you don't want all of your sins to be shown to the entire, every single human being, every single human being to ever step foot on this earth that has ever been created and have Allah reveal those to you, because you'll get, you'll get exactly what you deserve. And if you don't get it here on this earth, you will get it in the hereafter. Stop doing those things because that is not who Allah is. And you want to reflect Allah's attributes. You know, I don't know if it was an ayah, if it was, a, if it was part of Quran, if it was something, but as Muslims, we're supposed to show Islam. Like it's supposed to be our lifestyle and we're not supposed to teach people real we're not supposed to talk people into being Muslim we're supposed to show them and act it and become it and that's what you guys have to do you have to become it and the more that you practice those first things the more you will naturally do these things you don't have to force yourself when you start praying you start connecting with Allah when you start learning who you are and who Allah is these things will come naturally to you Islam itself the religion itself is a lot more how you how you carry yourself who you are who you are to other people who you are to your neighbor how you show up in the world how you hold yourself the way that you live your life islam is more of that than it is what you can and can't do there's only like a handful of things that we can and can't do that we're not supposed to do that we're forbidden and when you think because a lot of us don't think when you think and you become knowledgeable and you learn why we don't do those things, you'll realize why we don't do them. It's not to punish us. It's not to keep us from having fun and having a good time and being normal. And no, it's literally for our own health. It's literally for our own well-being. And when you look at the science behind eating pork, what happens when you eat pork? What happens when you drink? What happens when you um, when you engage in overindulging? Allah doesn't tell us to not do those things because, you know, he just told us not to do them and he doesn't want us to, you know, get lit and have fun and have a good time. But those things are damaging to us and damaging to our bodies. When you learn that and when you know that, it's like, dang, God is, like, God is really saving us from so much and we don't even realize because we never educate ourselves on it. We just want to be in control. We, want, we don't like being told what to do. And that's that ego. That's that ego. And the more that you feed into that ego, the more you want to control things, the more stress, 
the more depression, the more anxiety, the more fear, because you don't know what's going to happen. And when Allah says that he's given us so little knowledge, it's because he knows the past, future, and the present. All at once, he sees the whole picture. We don't. And so that causes us to be, what does Allah say? He created us anxious. We're, we're anxious. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't, we're, we're so caught up on the past and that stresses us out. That stresses us out. That makes us upset. That makes us sad. That puts us in depression. I honestly forgot where I was going with this. Allah sees the whole picture. You have to trust that he knows what he's doing. And when you learn it, and science is improving every single day, we're discovering new things every single day. When you learn it, you'll be like, oh dang, he was right the whole time, which of course he is, he's Allah, but you know what I mean? So if you don't like being told what to do, and you want to hold on to that ego, you don't, you can't even comprehend. Like, it just pisses me off because it's like, we can't even comprehend God. It's a concept that no matter how smart you are, you can never comprehend it. You, we don't even know what happens when you die. Obviously, Allah tells us what happens when you die, but we don't know because we, we're not able to see it. Allah sees it all. And he says, put your trust in me, it'll all work out fine. But we want to hold on to that control because, and it's crazy because Allah knows he's created us like that. And it takes a lot of strength to let go of that. So that's what you need to do. I don't know how I, don't know how I got here, but Islam is beautiful and it keeps us safe and it keeps us content Allah doesn't want to punish us like you can he says you can live a good life and have a good hereafter but we don't want to be told what to do we want to have fun we want to be like Jessica and Alexander and we get lit and we would have fun ask Jessica and Alexander years later what that experience did for them nothing another thing that you can do to better yourself is by learning about the prophet and the type of man he was you guys it makes me so emotional like i've cried so many times it makes me so emotional like he was perfect the way he lived the way he treated others the way he talked the way he carried himself Follow in his footsteps. Start implementing little, little things. We can't reach him. No, we can't reach him. But you can try. And those little changes will make such a huge difference in your life. I want to read to you guys this page from this book called Don't Be Sad. This book has a lot of wisdom in it. I highly recommend this one too. But I love this book. And here's, here's this um, little part that I had highlighted. The first person who benefits from an act of charity is the, benefic the benefactor himself. By seeing changes in himself and in his manners, by finding peace, by watching a smile form on the lips of another person. If you find yourself in difficulty or distress, show kindness to others and you will be the first to find comfort. And let me tell you guys something. Science is just not catching up on this too. There was literally a study done, like one of the most recent studies, and I heard this on the Mel Robbins podcast, that smiling at someone, listen to this, I literally screamed. I was listening to this at the gym. I was like on the treadmill or something and I wanted to throw up because I was like, this is literally Islam. Like how can we get every single human on this earth to understand it and become Muslim? Because it was one of the most recent studies and it, it was proving that when you smile at someone or show us a small act of kindness towards someone, it benefits you and it also benefits the other person psychologically. And I'm like, dude, dude, these have been the Islamic practices for centuries. Now, the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is surrender. I've talked about this throughout this entire video, but I'm gonna really get into what surrendering is. To know Allah, we must embrace life. We can't hide from it, we can't run from it. We have to face it. And that's exactly what I had to do. I had to face it. I couldn't run and I couldn't be distracted. And I couldn't constantly be distracting myself. I had to face my problems. I had to face life and I had to embrace it. The ego is a really dangerous thing. And we all have it. We all have it. And it's always going to be there. My ego is still there. It's a part of who you are. Okay? But your ego will take you to dangerous places. That wanting to control everything puts you in such a negative space, such a negative, deep negative space, and it's dangerous. Any book that I've read about the mind and stuff, they always talk about surrendering. You have to surrender to a greater power. You have to realize that you're not fully in control. And I'm like, dude, this is legit. <laughs> and the thing with the ego is she wants to take control of everything. 
she wants to, you know, get everything that she wants by force. And it's like, I can't do that for myself. And the more that I chase that, and the more that I chase this dunya and this world and the, all those physical things, and the more that I'm controlled by that physical reality, instead of looking within and then surrendering to God and surrendering to that higher power, without that, I'm never going to get anywhere. I'm just going to be chasing and chasing and chasing and then be stressed literally stress and you guys what that stress does to us not only does it show in our bodies like it is it is stored in our bodies it is a memorized feeling we're addicted to our problems we're addicted we literally become addicted to those things like addicted it's crazy because you'll be living your entire life wanting that control living in that ego living in that like depression anxiety stress but you're addicted to it and you can't get yourself out of it and that is why it's so hard for people to change but when you surrender and you surrender to Allah and you put that faith in him like I said he sees the full vision he knows everything period we don't know what is gonna happen tomorrow we don't know we don't know what's gonna happen in the next five seconds we need us we need to have faith in God and we need to put all our worries and our problems in his hands and trust that it'll work out remember remember how i was telling you guys that i just had this feeling of heaviness it's crazy because listen to this okay that feeling of heaviness is real everything is energy okay everything vibrates everything is energy everything vibrates that lower energy of envy that ego that envy that jealousy that wanting control the depression the sadness the feeling hopeless, the self-pity, all of those energies are literally denser and heavier. They vibrate slower and they're heavy. The moment that you surrender, practice those feelings of kindness and love and you treat people better and you treat yourself better and you, sh and, and you put that trust in Allah and you surrender and you're just filled with that love because Allah is the source of love. When you're filled with that love, that vibrates faster. It literally vibrates fast it vibrates faster and it's lighter physically lighter isn't that crazy like my mind was blown when I learned this the more you do right by Allah the more you reflect his attributes the more that you become better through the practices of Islam or just better period the lighter you feel literally that stress that comes from the ego and wanting control that puts you in survival mode and I told you guys you get addicted to that mode you become addicted to it and when you're in that state of survival you can't be in the state of creative or you can't be in the state of creation you can't start building yourself up and you can't start creating a better life for yourself and a better reality until you get out of that survival mode you get out of that control and that ego and that stress it's crazy because i was in that for such a long time but i was unaware you can be in that survival mode and that stress which so many people are and they're not able to get results that they want they're not able to create that life that they want because they're so stuck in that survival mode you don't feel it it becomes natural it becomes your personality it becomes literally who you are and that shows in your life that shows that's you reflect that into your outer world and your outer world looks just like your inner world does your outer world is filled with you know chaos if you want to be in that state of creation and you want to create a better life for yourself you want to create a better reality for yourself you got to get out of that survival mode and that takes surrendering to god when you surrender to allah you know you no longer have that craving for control literally magic happens and you're free from fear and anxiety because you trust that that future, remember that future that scares us and puts us into wanting to take control? That future that terrifies us so we continue to make bad decisions? Allah sees that future. That past that we hold on to and define ourselves by and let and become victim to, you can place that, the future, in the hands of Allah. Everything, just trust and have faith. And now you're in the unknown and it's scary. But the more love that you have for Allah, the more that you connect with Him, the more that you stay in those higher vibrations, the easier it is to just chill, to just vibe, to just create something better for yourself, to learn, to feed yourself knowledge, to indulge in the things that interest you, to be a better daughter, to be a better brother, to be a better sister, to be a better parent. You're able to create better results for yourself because you are now in a place of creation. You are now in this space where you feel safe and you're not in that survival mode. 
And because of that, you get better results. And you're not stuck in that loop of negativity. And that's how people stay stuck and can't change. That is literally how people stay stuck and they can't change. This will get you out of the loop. Surrendering gets you out of that loop. Now, this is from a book that I love so much, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And it's by Dr. Joe Dispenza, who I also love very much. I love watching his videos. He's He knows everything about the brain, everything about the mind. It's um, But he says, as our emotions become elevated, we naturally ascend to a higher level of consciousness closer to the source, that source being Allah. Allah is the source of everything. He's created everything, the universe, the earth, us, everything, the energy that we're talking about, those frequencies that we're talking about, Allah has created it because he is the ultimate source. The closer we feel to the source and feel more connected to universal intelligence. When you are in that state of, I've surrendered to Allah, and I don't know where I saw this, guys. I wish I could find it. I think it was a video, and I don't know if it was Mufti Mink. I don't know if it was his podcast, but he said, a young person who surrenders to Allah, the entire universe works in his favor. And I've made a TikTok about this, about how when you surrender to Allah, the entire universe works in your favor. You're not going to get this song the first time you hear it. After the second and third time, you're going to be like, whoa, what is this? And it does. It's like you unlock this whole new universe. It's like you unlock this whole new level of intelligence. And Anissa, I know you're watching this. Remember, I was going to text her about this, but might as well say it now. Remember how we were talking about when you become connected to Allah and you become closer to Allah, something weird happens and we couldn't explain it and we thought we were crazy because what happened was we we're talking about how we we're talking about how we all of a sudden became more smart. We became more smart. We started to unlock our truest potential, the things that interest us, the things that feel like they're meant for us. We were on this whole nother path. And then all of a sudden, all everything works in your favor. You're not stuck in fear. You're not stuck in anxiety. You're not stuck in the past. You're not focused on the future. You're in this moment figuring it out and the universe is working on your side. So when I learned this, and this is literally backed up by science, my mind was again blown. When I tell you guys, when you are in this new level of consciousness, magic happens. Literally magic happens. You have space, you freed up space for better things to come into your life. And that's exactly what happened. Okay, so this is also from the Secrets of Divine Love. The word Islam means to surrender to submit and could also mean well-being completion freedom and peace the word islam can be said to mean surrender and peace for it is only when we submit as servants to god that we are liberated from the enslavement of our egos now what did i say what is our ego again that needing of control when you let go of that needing of control what happens you're on a higher frequency you're vibrating faster your energy is getting lighter you physically physically feel lighter which is crazy and then what happens we're free from fear and anxiety and we can now create a better life for ourselves and that brings peace contentment our life is fulfilling and beautiful in order to make a change in your life you have to become greater than your circumstances you have to become greater than time and you have to become greater than your environment to do every single one of those things you need to surrender and put your faith in god this is also from the secrets of divine love to surrender is not to give up give in or lose rather it means being with what allah has written for you by embracing in faith gratitude and with complete trust that allah is the greatest of all planners beautiful now it wasn't easy to do that it wasn't easy to just surrender and to let go of my ego and all of a sudden i was free it took time it took energy it took effort it took leaping into the unknown which was so so scary. It took constant awareness. It took being uncomfortable all the time. And that is where affirmations and they could take place. That is where they come in. In order for me to be able to surrender like that and for me to push through, Thicket and affirmations was my best friend. I was in constant reminder. 
Yeah. Through affirmations, I was a constant reminder. And I had to change my beliefs about God. I never went to God to ask him for anything, but I had to change my subconscious programming, which we all have a subconscious programming. That's where our beliefs lie. That's why we know the languages we know. That's why we like the things we like. We all have a programming, okay? And I had to rewrite that programming. And it took a lot and it was hard and it wasn't easy. The concepts are easy and simple. Doing it, applying it, which is why so many people never change. Applying it and actually making it happen was what was so hard and took so much. But affirmations and dhikr played such a huge role in that. Now, there's this hadith, and I talk about this hadith a lot, but I'm pretty sure I already mentioned it earlier. Allah is who we think of him to be, and Allah does for us what we believe he can, right? We have to believe that. And in order to change our belief about something, we have to constantly repeat it and repeat it and remember it and remind ourselves of it and live by it. That way it stays true to us and it becomes, hey, this is who we are, this is what we believe. And so I have this thing on my phone, which I think all of you guys should do. Like I said, daily affirmations and dua. And I created my own affirmations based off of the 99 names of Allah. Now I can share a few of these with you guys, but um, I suggest you guys go ahead and make this for yourself and really tailor it to your life and your circumstances. When I was going through certain things, there were certain affirmations that I would say. Here are a few. Allah is my provider and will provide for me all that I need and desire. Allah is my healer and will heal me both internally and externally. Allah is the all forgiving and will forgive me for my shortcomings every, every time I repent. Allah is the source of my happiness and blesses me with happiness. Allah is my peace and will allow me to find peace within everything. Allah is my best friend and will never allow me to feel lonely when I have him. Allah is the most loving. He loves me. That brings me comfort and is enough for me. Allah is my guardian and protector. He will protect me from any evil and any harm. Allah is the evolver. Al-Bari is the evolver and will allow me to evolve into the woman I want to be. Allah is my guide. He's guiding me to the right path. He's guiding me to him. Allah is the light at the end of the tunnel. He's my final destination of a scary and hard travel, but his light shows me the way and makes me less scared. Allah is a road to my highest self. Now, I said this every single morning, every single evening. I literally have it memorized. I didn't even have to like look at it, but I have it memorized. And that and just like practicing dhikr. What is dhikr? What is dhikr? And I'm not going to go into what happens in your mind and the science behind affirmations, but dhikr is the repeating, is you're repeating the same things again and again. And what that does is that changes your belief about something. And so if you want to change your belief about law, practice affirmations and dhikr. Another thing that I would do is when I found myself in that negative heavy space again, and I was feeling, I was thinking a certain way. And, I'm, and I, when you become the observer of yourself and you start to, you know, clock things you'll know that when you're feeling down and you'll know why so i would go to my journal and i would write down here's something that i wrote down i know that you're scared and worried about failing but let go of those expect expectations of how things should be understand whatever the outcome is it is what's best for you push through work hard and allah and allah has got you never doubt that when the old ways the old way of living the old way of being of that fear and that doubt and that wanting control that ego comes back up and it arises i would shut her down i would shut her down i would say hey, hey, hey calm down that's not who we are anymore this is who we are now and every single aspect of your life works that way if you want to change anything you need to go down that path so i had to flip that and i had to become this is a quote from Tony Robbins where he was like, you have to become the guard of your mind. You have to clock the things that go in there. And that takes being aware. You got to be like a security guard of your mind. And that's what I was doing when I was journaling and I was writing that. When you know Allah and you love Allah and you remember Allah, you never lose. You will never lose. There is no way that you will ever, ever, ever lose. I don't make promises that I can't keep, but I promise you when you know who Allah is, and you love him and you remember him, you will never lose. Remember that Allah will always test your faith. When you're going through that journey, when you come out on the other side and you become someone else and we're always constantly on that journey, I'm constantly trying to better myself. You should always be trying to better yourself, but Allah will always test you. And the stronger your faith and your love for Allah is, the easier that trial will be. Yeah, imagine that. Allah says in Surah Al-Ankabut, do people think that once they say we believe that they will be left without being put to test? 
life is a test. We all know that it is. Okay, we learned that when we were like in elementary school. Life is a test. And the only way, the only way you will be successful in this life is with the help of Allah. So do not fumble the bag. Do not fumble the bag. I was filming this video for about two hours now, literally two hours. But I really, really, really hope and I pray that this video finds the right people and I hope that it's benefited you and I hope that it's given you a new perspective or new ideas and I hope that, I don't know, I just hope that it makes a difference in your life and I, this is life changing information, I'm not lying to you guys, this will change your life. I promise you. But that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please share it with a friend. I feel like if there's any video of mine that I want you to share and spread, it is this one. Life is scary, you guys. It's so easy to get so distracted and so easy, so simple to forget about Allah and to forget about who you truly are and be stuck in those cycles and those loops of negativity and just heaviness. And we have ways around it. We have cures. We have ways that you can better yourself. And it's easy and it's simple and it's beautiful. And so I want this to reach as many people as it possibly can. So if you have a friend, a sister, a brother, whatever, who you think also would benefit from this, then send it their way. But thank you so much for watching. I love you and I appreciate you. Leave a comment below about anything you've learned, maybe your journey, some more tips. So that way we can all benefit from one another. But I love you so much and I hope to see you next time.